If you're selling on Amazon, there's a good chance that I've looked at your listing. No, seriously, I have analyzed thousands of listings, definitely over 8,000, probably way more than that. I have been looking at hundreds and hundreds of listings every single year for many, many years at this point. And I have over this time, both as a customer and as a consultant and as a listing optimization expert, I have learned a thing or two that I would like to share with you about some of my top Amazon listing optimization tips. Now, of course, things have changed quite a bit since I started working with Amazon sellers back in 2016. However, these tips are going to be timely, relevant, and the things that can help you achieve success in 2024 and beyond. So if that sounds good to you, then let's go ahead and get into things. Hello, my name is Emma Shermer Tamir. I'm the CEO and co founder of Marketing by Emma, and one of our specialties is helping businesses navigate the highly competitive world of Amazon with expert Amazon listing optimization. And so through this, we look at listings with a fine tooth comb, looking for different things that businesses can do to target their listings more effectively, to position them in a more strategic way, to help them stand out from the competition, connect with customers, drive excitement, build emotion, and get people eager to buy. So today I am pulling back the curtain and sharing some of my top tips that you should be using. And by the way, I know we're talking Amazon, but these are things that can really apply to any type of copywriting that you are doing for the World Wide Web. So yes, some of these things are going to be spoken about through Amazon language, but they are tried and true principles that work today if you want to connect with and convert as many customers as possible. So number one, keep it concise. Speak to the point. Use as few words as you need to to get your message across. Attention is so hard to come by and so easy to lose. So if you have grabbed your customer's attention or your potential customer's attention, you want to make sure that you do everything you possibly can to hold onto that. And so you want to make sure that you are making your content easy to navigate, that you're not being overly wordy, you're not keyword stuffing, you are speaking to the point in a way that is impactful, that has energy, that is building emotion and is keeping me engaged so that my mind isn't wandering, so I'm not getting confused, so I'm not feeling stupid. Any of those experiences are experiences that are going to send customers running towards your competitors. You don't want that, so make sure to speak directly to the point by keeping things concise. So let's look at an example to see what I mean. The Offender today is the Fun Millie Treadmill, 300 pound capacity with auto incline. And when we talk wordy, these bullets are wordy. I feel exhausted just by looking at the first, let alone all the rest. So we have our treadmills use high performance upgrade motors compared with traditional brushed motors. Upgrade motor treadmills are quieter, more powerful, and have a longer surface life. When you use the upgrade motor treadmill, the maximum speed, holy moly, that is a lot of content and that is not even the first bullet. There is a lot that could be done to trim out the excess words here and still preserve all of the information that they think is important to communicate. However, another issue with this as I'm looking at it is, is that it's not organized well. And you want to make sure to group information together around similar themes. So if we're first talking about how this has a really strong motor, then we might not want to be talking about the fact that it is a foldable treadmill that's perfect for users of all sizes. So we want to be clear about what our primary focus is, whether it's an image, whether it's a bullet, whether it's a part of the A plus content and really keep it focused, keep it clear and cut excess content. So in contrast, we have the, I don't know how to pronounce this 
name, intense, oh, hmm, intensity, they even show us in parentheses. This is an expensive treadmill. And you see here that they are very concise with their content. So don't assault your joints with a competitor's conveyor belt design. Custom industry exclusive dual bearing system keeps you in control every step of the way. Really direct, really to the point, helps me understand how this compares, helps me understand why I might want to consider spending more money on a, a much higher priced item versus the other. So non-motorized, place anywhere, no power outlet required. That's pretty fascinating that it is a non-motorized treadmill. That's not something I'm familiar with. That might be a little bit too concise to the point where now we are entering territory where I'm a bit confused and I don't understand. So if they could tell me um, some more information about how that works. So looky there in the third bullet, be controlled by user. Walk, jog, and run at your own user is the motor and burns up to 30% more calories. So it's still, it's a little bit confusing. It's a little bit too vague. I would like some more direct language that helps me understand exactly how this works and why this should be the type of design that I should be looking for when I'm buying a treadmill. They really need to be able to justify their more expensive price tag, but also their more unique concept and design but they are very concise, they are very to the point, they are doing a good job of helping me understand why this matters and why it might be better, and I just think they could take it a little bit farther. Number two, know your niche. You need to be very clear in understanding who you're selling to and the category that you're selling in, and categories are broad things. So when I'm saying niche, I'm not just saying the category as a whole. I'm saying specifically the segment of the category that you're selling in that you live in and that you are trying to dominate. So let's say, for example, that you are selling skincare, but you're not just selling any skincare. You are selling skincare for millennials who have struggles with acne. So that is going to put you into a subcategory with a lot of other competitors that might be targeting that same segment of customers. And you need to know this like the back of your hand and you need to know it everywhere. So you don't want to be looking only at your top competitors on Amazon, but you also want to be casting a wide net, expanding your horizons, seeing who you're competing against on TikTok shop and on Walmart and on Google and on Instagram and all the places you want to know what's happening in your area, what's relevant, what's not relevant, what used to be and is now seeming a little bit outdated, what are people caring about, what are people talking about. You need to have your finger on the pulse if you want to be relevant, if you want to anticipate your customers' needs, and if you want to be able to really be in the game to your full potential. Three, building a brand and differentiation. So if you know your niche, the next Part of that is thinking about how you can really curate a brand identity and use that to be able to differentiate your product from all of the other products out there, your brand from all of the other businesses out there. This is so important as we enter this new era of AI generated content. That means that there is a lot of noise. We talked about how hard attention is to come by. It's going to be even harder to grab that attention. But what we're seeing from a variety of research, what Neil Patel has reported recently in some studies that they did is that people respond better to content that still has that human touch. Speaking about real experiences, speaking about case studies and examples and authenticity and those things that make us uniquely human, you can lean into even stronger through your brand building, through your copywriting, through your imagery and thinking about ways that you can really foster a connection. And a way of doing that is being very, very clear about who your brand is. I have a video that goes into more in depth about this and I'll be sure to link it in the I and down below, but you must figure this out if you want to compete in high competition categories, if you're wanting to compete on more than price, more than reviews, and really establish yourself in a position to be able to go the distance, enter into other markets, enter into other marketplaces, 
this is going to be key for you. It's also going to be a way, particularly if you're on Amazon, to be able to start to build up that brand recognition and help to begin to be that brand that people are wanting to follow on social media, that they're going to want to sign up for your email list. We know that you don't have access to the customer list as an Amazon seller. And so if you're wanting to also build out your own list, brand building is going to go a long way with this and in tandem to that, differentiating yourself so that you are helping customers understand what makes you unique, what makes you special, what values you stand for. If you want to learn more about the USP and value proposition, I'll link a video to that as well. But it is so important if you're wanting to really foster those connections and build a brand that customers are going to recognize by name, that they're going to want to tell people about, that they're going to want to go back and see what it is that you're selling, that they're going to think about you when they're buying presents or making recommendations. You don't want to just be that thing that they bought on Amazon. I mean, you can be, and you can make a lot of money doing that. But if we're thinking long-term, if we're thinking big picture, that is not as sustainable of a strategy. So let's look at two waters sparkling waters, more precisely. The first being aha water, which if we are talking about brand building, which is, we know, so important, then we need to have a distinct identity of who the brand is, how they communicate, and how we expect to interact with them. So when we're looking at the A-plus content of aha, they leave a lot to be desired. We have one little section about the specific flavor, which isn't really about the flavor. It just says the flavor name and then it goes into that they have a bunch of flavors. And then we have an image of all the flavors. So we are really not given any information to understand why this sparkling water should be our sparkling water of choice. Are they better flavors? Are they more unique flavors? Is there something special about the commitment that this company has to some value that we don't know about? Is it that they are trying to really target a different segment than who is normally purchasing sparkling water? What is it? What makes AHA special? Why should we buy from them? Obviously, water, for the most part, is water is water. And so this is where brand can really come in and play a much more significant role in even other categories where we may have something more innovative or unique, like the treadmills that we looked at earlier in this video. There, it's not just about the treadmill is a treadmill is a treadmill. We have different kinds of technology, so maybe we can be a little bit lazier with the brand in that respect. However, when it comes to water, we don't have much to innovate on, which means that that brand piece can be really significant in helping take things to the next level. And that's why everybody is all abuzz about Liquid Death because they are the antithesis of AHA. They are, they've do, dove headfirst into branding and they are pretty unapologetic about who they are and very clear about who they are. You don't have any question. Everything from the design of the can to the text, the way that they speak about it, the people that they bring in to be brand ambassadors, it is all really, really clear about who they are. And you see here, I mean, don't be scared. It's just water. I love that. <laughs> They have a sense of humor. Blind taste test. People say it's better than caviar. Murders your thirst. We have a, a woman holding a, a chainsaw. They talk about how aluminum is infinitely recyclable, cyclable, so they do have a sustainability aspect in there, but even that is very on brand. So they're not trying to portray their sustainability through the more stereotypical lens of showing a, a serene environment or a flowing river or a landfill. They have these demons, I believe, in this hellscape type of environment. And then we even see they have a limited edition art case. So they are partnering with awesome artists and they're just embodying 
a clear identity and leveraging that to be a powerhouse in a category that is at its core water. Fascinating, but a great example of how brand building can take you a long way. Pristine imagery. Let's just let that settle in for a minute. Pristine imagery. We don't want to see those poorly photoshopped images that are so obviously not real where we have this white kitchen and then this awkward looking spoon that there's no way that it belongs there. We want great photos that are well edited, that are going to help customers understand that you mean business, that you are a reliable company, that you take pride in your products. Not only images aren't just about showing that you are you know, the, showing the product in action, showing it in different lifestyle situations and calling out important features and details about the product. Imagery is also something that is helping you build trust. Trust is so important, especially when we're doing business online because customers aren't having an opportunity to interact with us or our representatives or the products. They're having to essentially take our word for it. And so Images are a way of reinforcing that you take pride in your products and your company, that you are quality, and that you are a business that is trustworthy and someone to be able to purchase from with peace of mind. You want to make sure that you have great images. This is something to invest in. This is something that you can use for the long run. And Great images don't have to be done in a studio. You can even use user-generated content. I think one of the things that I'm really wanting to drive home is it's those poorly edited images that are so obviously fake. User-generated content, the whole production value doesn't have to be as high, but you're also getting trust from somewhere else by having images or video of real people using and loving your product. So when we're thinking about those images that are not in that category, make sure that if your product is not actually in that environment, that you are using the highest quality 3D rendering or editing services at your disposal to make sure that it looks real and authentic. So I could tell you how important images are or I could show you how important images are. And we're going to go back to some treadmills for some examples uh, to really drive this point home. So the first example that we're going to be looking at is Spirax treadmills. And truly, their images look like something out of an 80s or 90s style website, the the font is incredibly odd. The images look unusual. They're very poorly edited. They're kind of all over the place. They talk about a smart motor, but it, because it looks so dated, it is not helping me feel confident that this is a smart motor or that it's something that is going to be able to last, that it's going to be something that's reliable, that it's going to even be something that's safe to use. And it, it's still not an inexpensive project product. I'm showing that it's $260. So if I'm looking to spend that money on something like this, then I'm going to want to know that it's safe, that I'm not going to injure myself with it, that it's going to be something that's going to last, that it's going to be healthy to use. And these images are not helping communicate any of those things at all. In contrast, we see that with Maxone, we have almost an identical price point. It's just $10 more, but their imagery, it has, it looks nice. It has some pictures of the product in real environments with real people. It has it's all just stylized in a much more aesthetically pleasing way. And so if you were looking at these pictures side by side and trying to choose one that seemed more legitimate, more reliable, higher quality, Maxone does that. Maxone is communicating that they're a higher quality product without even having to say it just by having better looking photos. Develop your real estate. 
You have a limited amount of space on an Amazon product page at your disposal to be able to sell to customers, communicate why your product is a great fit for their needs, upsell or cross-sell other products in your catalog, and build a brand. And you definitely want to be taking advantage of every single part of that. So you want to have great images. You want to have solid video. You want to have a dialed in title that's going to be driving the right kind of traffic to your listing. You want to have bullets that are really strong and pack a punch and clear and easy to navigate. You want to have pristine premium A plus content that is showing off your product to its full potential. And you want a brand story and you want to be using all of these things and taking full advantage of what Amazon is giving you because that is not only taking up more space on the page, but it's giving you more opportunity to build connection, communicate about your product, and make additional sales perhaps even if you have a wide range of a catalog that has a lot of different items there. So you wanna be taking advantage of that. I have a whole playlist for all of the different Amazon listing optimization pieces. So everything from how to create a better title to bullets to product description. If you would like to go deep on any one of those parts, then I will link that playlist for you to do your additional homework so that you can make sure that not only are you developing every piece of your Amazon real estate, but that you are building it into an immaculate building that's going to attract eyeballs and welcome customers in and get them excited. Play by Amazon's rules. This is where I'm going to be talking about something that isn't as fun, but is very important. It's so easy in business of any kind to make mistakes because you just didn't know. And on Amazon, it's even more confusing because we see examples of things that competitors are doing or other sellers are doing on Amazon. And we assume that if they're doing that, that means it's okay. And unfortunately, that is not the case. So you want to be very clear about what the rules are of what you can say, what you cannot say, how you can design everything. Amazon is very specific about what it wants, but is also not always the clearest at articulating that. So sometimes you'll see contradictions. Sometimes you'll th see things that may give you the impression that it's okay, but it's not. And if you're ever unsure, it's always better to ask than to make a mistake and then find yourself in a situation where your listing is suppressed or suspended and you are now needing to go through a lot of red tape just to be able to be in a position to start selling again. I have a video that talks all about the things that you need to avoid doing with your Amazon listing copy from TOS standpoint. So if you're concerned about that or wanting to dive a little deeper, I will link that video. And more than anything else, if I can leave you with one such vital piece of advice, obsess over your customers. Be clear about who your customers are. Reinforce who your customers are throughout all of this real estate that we're talking about developing. So if you know that your customers have certain interests, reflect that through the imagery. If you know that your customers are of a certain demographic, that should be represented in your imagery. If you know that your customers are going to be using your product with another product, talk about that. If they have certain concerns or fears, reinforce how your product can help solve that. The more that you bring the customer into the conversation, the better. I don't think that I'll ever be able to say this enough because it is such a key part of marketing that I think particularly when it comes to the digital world, it can be easy to lose sight of or we get greedy and we want to just expand and cast a wide net and say that everybody is our customer, everybody would love our product, and then all that we end up doing is really diluting our message, failing to communicate in an effective way, and doing ourselves a great disservice. So those are some of my top tips from looking at 8,000 or 
maybe more like 10,000 or even more Amazon listings. Let me know what tip do you think is the most important or what tip did I miss that you would like to share with viewers? Leave it down below. Give this a like if you enjoyed it. Let me know what you would like to see next. Be sure to subscribe and why don't you check out the video that YouTube is recommending next. I hope you love it and I will see you next time. Bye.